Welcome to the season finale of season one at Leeds United. You join us with four games to go in the championship season. We are very close to Leicester City. Bit nervously close, actually. Bit unnervingly close. And Middlesbrough at seven points behind. So, with 12 points available, automatic promotion isn't yet guaranteed. It's an expected but not yet guaranteed. The title I anticipate going down to the final day, Leicester have matched us stride for stride since they fell back behind us. They've scored more goals than us, but crucially they've conceded more as well. Goal difference is in our favour, but if we lose and they win, they will go top by a point, so we cannot afford to do any of the losing. We have four games, Swansea away, Blackburn at home, West Brom away, and then Hull City at home. We hope to end the season with a trophy lift if we possibly can. Some of the games will be easier than others, but Swansea are not having a great season. 23rd in the table. Millwall 17th, Hull City 14th, Blackburn 12th. Actually, it was West Brom, not Millwall, wasn't it? So West Brom 10th, Blackburn 12th, Hull City 14th. So we've been quite lucky with the run-in with the, the fixtures we've had. We've also played uh, 21st place Sheffield Wednesday in the run-in. We had 18th place Birmingham yesterday. Actually, it was Millwall we had in the last episode yesterday as well. So all six of our, all seven of our final fixtures this season are sides that are mid-table or lower. I don't know what who Leicester and Middlesbrough have as we head into this season finale episode. So thank you to everyone on the board behind me for your continued support on stream and in the comment section. Finn, Jamie and AJ, thank you very much indeed for that. Let's head then to the Swansea City Stadium or Swansea.com Stadium as it is now for Vitality as we used to know it. Start things off right and keep that theme running throughout the course of the episode. We'd love to be promoted today and not have the lottery of the playoffs. We'd also love the title if we can get it. Starting lineup is strong. Actually, to be fair, Bamford and uh, Ruter should start this one because they were in great form in the last episode. Ruter scored an outrageous overhead kick. If you missed it, you need to go and watch it. Swansea lost four of their last five. So this is the most favorable of all the upcoming games. And hopefully we can get that result. Kickoff underway then here at the Liberty Stadium, not the Vitality Stadium, as I previously mistakenly said. Swansea, South Wales, Liberty Stadium, Bournemouth, South England, Vitality Stadium. Well done, Cheesenoid. Swansea.com Stadium is what it's actually called. And with them in the relegation zone and looking likely of heading down to League One, a place where Swansea haven't been for quite a while, they... Might actually be down to 10 men as well in the first five minutes. Cody Drama destroyed and it is a straight red card. Pojeta gone. Early doors sent off. Oh dear Swansea. Lot of red L's in the form book. Now a red card and probably another red L as well. That's not great. Fans... Still in good voice, despite being nearly relegated and down to 10 men here against the league leaders. It's not going to be a good, gate, a good day for them, I don't think, at this rate. We're on the attack. They've cleared it. Yates. I'll have that back, though. And through there will be Somerville. Scored a great goal yesterday. Scores a simpler one today. Swansea nil. Leeds United won. And Swansea's day is only going to get worse from here. Down the line to Cullen. Can we get to that? I can't. Yates is in here. It's missed the target, though. When you're only going to have a couple of efforts in the game as a whole, down to 10 men and struggling on the back foot out of form, you really need to at least work the keeper to give yourselves the chance from a set piece and get more people involved in the attack when you're probably going to be the only man forward. And he's not even hit the target there. They're trying, Swansea, but they've been trying all season and so far they haven't been good enough. And they're not good enough here to do anything at the moment other than lose 1-0 at half-time and hopefully by full-time even more. Gates, I'm actually a little bit concerned that they might get a result here against the Swansea. 
They are building really well, and Yates is in. And for the second time today, fails to hit the target. That was even better than the first chance. Swansea definitely could have taken a point out of this. It popped up during that highlight as well to say that Leicester were 3-1 up in their game. So we do need to guarantee at least a point here to stay top of the table. Looks like we're going to, but will it be the point or will it be all three? Still in the position for all three, but, Sp but Swansea are growing more and more in the game. But is it too little, too late for the Swans to take something from this? And I'm not sure what their scenario is at the bottom end of the table. They're 23rd, but what's the gap to safety? I don't know. I think they and Rotherham in 23rd and 24th were both on 33 points. I think they were a little ways from safety as well. They, I don't think, are already down. So there's still something to fight for for them. But honestly, they really, really should have done better with those two chances. Yates should have done much better with those two chances. And time is running out for them here. And the, when they finally look to make that breakthrough, they're just not quite good enough, unfortunately. James down there to Drama, looking for the run of Ruteus, come off the bench. No, Ruteus started, didn't he? It's Piro in the middle that's come off the bench for uh, for Bamford. And Piro, the former Swan, can't force it home. It nearly fell to Dan James, the other former Swan we brought off the bench. It's going to be 1-0. It's going to be 1-0. It's enough. If we win all games today, we will win the league. Judging by everyone's reaction on the pitch as well, actually. I think Middlesbrough might have lost. I think we just guaranteed promotion. Leeds United will be a Premier League side next season. The scenes on the field are jubilant. The victory away from home, they're definitely celebrating a little bit more wildly than they would if it were just a simple 1-0 win against 10 men away from home. Middlesbrough lose 1-0 to West Brom. Leeds United, Premier League for next season. Attentions turn then now solely into Leicester City. We are up, but will we win the league? 101 points to 99. 10 points clear of Middlesbrough. We are promoted and now I've slipped into the red for the managerial position right now. What is happening, Leeds United board? Stop being absolute morons. Can you believe it? We guarantee promotion, and now for the first time it slips into the red. Go away! Jeez Louise, right, Blackburn at home. I'm going to change my top. Bring it on, Blackburn! 101 points we've gotten so far. Ollie McBurney up top for Blackburn, and that wasn't unexpected. Blackburn Premier League winners in 94. Five, I want to say. 94-95 season. Premier League winners. Blackburn Rovers. So they have top flight credentials. One more Premier League than Leeds United have. But certainly Leeds have had the better legacy in the Premier League, you'd say. Blackburn are a great Premier League side. But Leeds have been more competitive in the Premier League over a longer period, you'd say. Despite the fact that Blackburn do have that that one league title to their name, you say that Leeds are a bigger club. Drama. To Wilfred Nonto. Here's Joe Geller. He's been really quiet of late, Joe. Was the go to man for a period earlier in the season. Ambadu will just squeeze that to Archie Gray. And Piru, maybe I should have played the pass to Nonto, but he probably would have been closed down as soon as the ball got to him as well. So tried to squeeze the shot off and it didn't work. Drama's won that back though. And Nonto will look for Gellart here. It's Peru still, sorry. And another missed effort for Joel. His goals have dried up as well. I'm not sure if he's the top goal scorer in the league. He's certainly got to be one of, that's for sure. But whether he's the, I don't know. At the moment, I can't break down this Blackburn defensive line. They're doing everything they can to ensure that the title continues to be hanging in the balance. Although they do keep losing it again. Peru, can he bring that down? No, Blackburn still stand firm. The defensive line's been great, even if the midfield and forward line have been absolutely terrible so far. I won't take any risks now. Just going to get that away. Piri brings it down, used an arm in doing so. 
The pitch at Elland Road has really taken a battering this season, as you can see. There is a lot of mud here and a distinct lack of grass in a number of areas. Hopefully there's not going to be a lack of points or trophies for Leeds United this season. We would very much like to win the title, please. We have the chance. Oh, my God, Joel Peru. I feel terrible that hasn't gone in for you. We have the chance to break Reading's points tally record at the top of the championship. The record is 106 currently. We have the potential to get 110. But Leicester City have the potential to get 107. They could break Reading's record as well. And we might need to actually break the record to stand a chance of winning the title. Archie Gray's effort is well saved by Valstead. And still, Blackburn Rovers stand firm. And the fact that we'd have to break the point scoring record to actually still finish first is remarkable. And shows how strong a season Leicester City have also had and how crazy a year it's been here in the Championship. Archie Gray will get this down. Joe Geller under control. Shot blocked. Trying to force it. Getting a little bit frustrated, actually, with that points record. And still the title on the line. The 1-0 lead, just as the 2-0 lead against Swansea, won't come. Back to Tronstad. And Gray intercepts nicely. Peru. There's the ball. Geller. There's the goal. Joe Geller finally on the score sheet again. And what a big goal it could prove to be. Leeds United 1, Blackburn nil. Four minutes into the second half. One step closer. Sammy Schmodick's coming on for John Buckley. It was John Buckley, not Will Buckley. I thought it was Will Buckley in the midfield for them. John Buckley I'm not familiar with, I don't know. I don't think I know John Buckley. Certainly no Sammy Schmodix, former Peterborough United player. Scored a hat-trick against Cambridge in real life uh, this season. And he's absolutely smashing it, IRL, for Blackburn in the Championship as well. Scored a hat-trick against Cambridge in the FA Cup. Two goals in the next game in the FA Cup for Blackburn Rovers against Wrexham and has 18 I think in the championship as of recording so far this season in 30 games it's been remarkable for them certainly someone we maybe should consider looking into at some point in some lower league save whether it's this one I don't think whether it's the Cambridge United one I mean maybe he, has, he is former Peterborough but I'm sure we could let that fly if it meant that he scored the goals that got us a promotion or a trophy of some description. We've got Sun, or oh, sorry, they've got Sunderland coming up. We, of course, West Brom and Hull City at the end of the season. But we can't focus on anything other than the last 25 minutes here because Blackburn seem absolutely determined. Oh my God, to get themselves down to 10 men by the looks of things. And also to try and stop us from winning here. Given away by Blackburn and drama forward. Nonto and Gil Hart. Here's Archie Gray. Wagner. I, know you, I like the run by Peru. Into some space. Gil Hart in the middle. Not able to get to that. Can we win this with Archie Gray? We can. Ampadu holds the ball up. Drills it to Nonto. Back inside. Ampadu. Peru. Peru. Somerville. Oh, what a finish. Crescencio Somerville sweeps that home. Great technique. Leeds 2, Blackburn nil. We will get three points here today. No updates about Leicester City's results at this stage. Peru with the two efforts, but the technique there is superb. Keeps it low, drills it hard. Somerville's been very impressive of late. Very impressive indeed, in fact. Just two minutes added on here. We'll see the game out. Make sure we get the win. Goal difference isn't important for us. We have a dominant goal difference compared to Leicester City. They might get 100 plus points and 100 plus goals this season. However, we might only do the points tally. In fact, we already have done the points tally. We were on 101 prior to that game. We're now going to be on 104. We don't know what Leicester have done here at the end of April. With two games to go in May and two games to go in the season... Leicester were victorious. So still a two-point gap only at the top of the table. We shall head to the Hawthorns and hope that we can do something there as well. Leicester on their penultimate match day. 
actually play the day after again, and they've got eighth placed Norwich at the King Power. On the final day, then, they have Sheffield Wednesday away. Sheffield Wednesday have already been relegated. No, Wednesday are not yet down and have everything to fight for still. Ipswich in 21st, which is rather apt, as last year's just raided us on stream. Uh, Rotherham, four points from safety. Still doable. Swansea, five points from safety. Technically, still doable. It's all to play for at the bottom. It's all to play for at the top with the playoff picture, Middlesbrough and Southampton guaranteed. But any two of Coventry, Stoke, Watford, Norwich, West Brom, Bristol City, or even perhaps Sunderland could yet finish in the playoffs. The championship is such a good division. Let's go and play West Brom. See if we can't guarantee the league title. Rangers have offered me a million quid for Carl Darlow. I'll take it. West Brom in ninth. Chasing that playoff spot as we saw a moment ago. 4-2-3-1 wide for them. Matt Phillips on the left. They have lost three games in the last five, though. So they're kind of bottling the playoffs a little bit here, West Bromwich Albion. We will travel to the Hawthorns. I need to change my top still. We'll travel to the Hawthorns to get the result. We hope that we'll see us win the league. But we don't yet know if a win will win us the league. A dr I mean, a defeat could still help us win the league if Leicester slip up as well. Alex Mauer is missing, suspended, as you can see, bottom left. But they've got options on the bench in Josh Madger and a couple of others as well. Andy Vyman there also. So it's not going to be an easy game against West Brom by any stretch of the imagination. But it's a game we have to be confident of winning. James, little back heel, Cody Drama. All right. Dispossessed by Matt Phillips, who's immediately dispossessed by Cody Drama. Gruev getting a start here for the first time in a little while. Gets himself nutmegged. By the West Brom man. And now Yukuslu get this forward. Matt Phillips down the line. Reach. Round the outside. Round the outside. Round the outside. Is he going to point to the spot? Is he given a goal kick? I think he's given a free kick. He's given a goal kick. Oh, that was a brief little panic. I thought I'd fouled Daryl there. And that was going to be the opportunity for West Brom to take the lead from the spot. A couple of changes you may have noticed to the starting lineup. Nonto moved central, Dan James on the right, Ruter starts, Gruev into the 11 as well. That's loose. I'm sure about Gruev's first touch, but never mind. Nonto, Ruter, we're in. Go on, Jorginho! Da -da 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 -da. Leeds United are 1-0 up. Leeds 1, West Brom 0. If Leicester don't win against Norwich, then that goal wins us the league. I keep thinking to myself, Nonto's a long way out of position. And I remember, oh no, I put my cam. <laughs> That's loose. Strauch steps in twice. Does very well indeed. Nonto under pressure. Finds Somerville though. Counter attack is on. Kipre is trying to get to me. Here's Ruter. Oh dear. Oh dearie, dearie, dearie me. Uh, that's not the one, Jorginho. That is not the one or even close to it. That's horrendous. Given away. Oh, that's nicely through. And Dykes in. And Swift. 1-1. One, one. West Brom equalise and potentially a comeback is on. Just two and a half minutes into the second half. We're normally the side that score as a half kicks off. We've been very good at scoring early goals in the first and second halves. But this turn from Daryl there just opened up the room for Swift to run through and slot home at the near post. West Brom making a fight of it. It's a lovely ball. Malumbi steps away from me. Daryl straight at the keeper, luckily. All right, West Brom, calm down. You're getting a little bit too good for my liking here at the moment. Somerville looking for Rutea through the gap. Up against the defence. Cardiff 1, Middlesbrough 2 is a result at the moment. Middlesbrough just taken a 2-1 lead there. We'd love to take a 2-1 lead here. Oh, and if he hit that first time like I hoped he would, we probably would have done. Now here comes Wallace on the counter attack. Wagner has fantastic stamina. Even in the 78th minute, he's still got about 80% stamina left. Challenged by Daryl Dyke. Now we're in trouble. West Brom maybe to take the lead here. 
Saved by Melier. Falls to Furlong. Still the chance. Tackled and away. This is nervy, you know. We're not guaranteed anything here yet still. Let alone in terms of the league table. I don't know. Well, no, actually, Leicester are playing in the next day, aren't they? Leicester play Norwich on the Sunday. Strong challenge by Reach. Referee didn't like it. Free kick for us, but West Brom nearly took the lead there. Somerville into Shackleton. Didn't quite manage to turn away, as I'd hoped. Furpo wrong-footed. And now here come West Brom. 92nd minute. It would be a match winner if they find it, which they won't. Cresswell delivers well. well de sorry, clears well. Furlong back to Malumbi. Time is done now. John Swift from distance, no. And as we clear this, that'll be a point only. So if, if Leicester win against Norwich, we will be level on points heading into the final day. Bagger. We have to hope that Leicester drop points. Although goal difference is in our favour, we have not yet broken Reading's record. It stands at 106 points and we have 105. Darlow is going to Rangers next season. So he's now left. That's absolutely fine. We've got Melier, we've got Clairson, we've got youngsters coming through the Youth Academy as well. Youth Scout reports are... Oops, I deleted it. Youth Scout reports are available. So we'll go and have a look at those in a moment. At the minute, I'm more worried about what Leicester have done. And Leicester have been unfortunate in that they drew with Norwich. 3-3 at the King Power Stadium. So as we head to the final day against Hull City, all we need is a point and we win the league because there's no way Leicester overturn that goal difference. They've got 104 goals this season. Disgusting from Leicester City. But will they win the league or will we? So the league table scenario heading into this final round of fixtures sees us top by two points. We have Hull City at home, hence the change of shirt. Leicester have Sheffield Wednesday away. Now Wednesday have been in the relegation zone most of the season. They still find themselves there, but they can save themselves with a win. Leicester need a win. Wednesday need a win. It is shit or bust for both sides. Leicester already promoted, so less on the line for them. Although, obviously, they'd love to win the league, but so would I. Ipswich have Huddersfield at home. Ipswich also need a win to guarantee it. Because if they draw and Wednesday beat Leicester, Wednesday will go above them on goal difference and Ipswich will go back down to League One. So Ipswich need a win as well. With regards to the playoff situation, Southampton very much in, Middlesbrough even more so, but Stoke and Coventry currently the two sides that are there, but Watford would love to go into sixth place. And who do Watford have on the final day of the season? Coventry. So it's shit or bust there for both sides as well. Whoever wins that fixture is in the playoffs. Stoke Actually, if they draw, if they draw, they if they draw, it stays as is because Stoke are just that little bit further ahead. I was thinking maybe Watford could sneak in, but no, Watford need the win. Coventry just need to avoid defeat, and because of the nature of Coventry playing Watford, that means that Stoke are guaranteed a playoff spot despite being. Only two points clear of Watford. Because of the way the fixture list has fallen, Stoke are guaranteed that spot, which is just as well because they have Southampton away, which actually is probably going to be a precursor for the playoff semi-finals that they're going to play. So it, quite literally, all to play for in this season finale. So then, on the final match day, Hull City will line up against us as follows. Ingram in goal. Wow, they're in poor form. Ingram in goal, Christy Greaves, McLaughlin, Ryan Giles at left wing back. Obviously on loan currently at Hull. Slater, Seri, Traore, Jaden, Abdul Kadir, and Connolly. Jaden Philogen, very, very much hotly anticipated to join a Premier League side in the not too distant future IRL after that remarkable Rabona goal. Fabio Cavallio still on loan there on the bench for them. Zarawi there as well. Liam Delaps on the bench too. They've got options, Hull, but 
They aren't having as good a season here as they are in real life. They're pushing for the playoffs, IRL. They are solidly 15th and absolutely bloody nowhere in this save. But we want to win the league. And a point only is enough for us because of goal difference. So, in the fourth played game today for this season finale, let's go and get that point, shall we? Now, we are going to be heavy favourites for the overall result here. With the two-point lead as well, we're going to be heavy favourites for that title, despite the fact that it is as close as it is. Leicester, by far and away, the best goal scorers in the division. Over 100 goals for them, over 100 points for both of us. We could both break Reading's record. We're one point behind, so we could end on 106 points or 105 if we lose. Or... Potentially 108 if we win, which would break the record. Leicester, if they win against Sheffield Wednesday, would draw level with Reading's record at 106. But at the moment, if Leicester win, uh, they win the league because Hull have just gone and taken a 1-0 lead right off the bat. That wasn't part of the script, gentlemen! We don't necessarily like doing things the hard way on the channel. We just find ourselves... Occasionally doing things the hard way. Going to back out here to Nonto. And Piru's in the middle. That's going to go straight to the keeper. Ingram gathers it in. And we will stay 1-0 down for now. If there's an update about the Leicester City result, I will let you know. You won't be able to see it behind my camera. So if anything happens, you'll be the first to know through that gap. No. philogene has got a real face, has he, in-game. Nonto wins that back. Slots it in. Peru on his left. No, on his right. No goal. Drama's done well there, though. And still, we could score. It's Gellar. It's a good save down low again by Ingram. Gellar's on 15 goals for the championship season. Peru's on 16. So between them, they are battling it out for top league goal scorer within the squad. Neither of them in the picture for the uh, for the league, though, unfortunately. Here is Jaden. That is awful. There is potentially some call to sign Jaden Philogene in the summer, but that's not the best of uh, auditions from him so far with that. That's a lovely ball into Nonto. Oh, and you know what the intention was? To get it down there to Cody Drama, but it didn't work. 25 minutes in, I'm still losing. Might not be for long, though. Ampadu. Nonto. Peru. Oh, Ingram with another top stop. It's all Leeds United since the goal, isn't it? We can't get that equaliser yet. Ampadu's up. Who's going to win that? Christy does. Archie Gray nods it down. It's Joe Bloody Roden. He's Somerville, though. He loves scoring goals for us this season. Certainly recently. Another corner. Nonto to deliver again. Peru's up. Peru straight into the hands of the keeper. He's pumped it quickly, actually. That might not work for them. Or, you know, it could. It really could. Seri. And Abdul Qadir. Well done. One back. Abdul Qadir Khan SI was an international cricketer who bowled leg spin for Pakistan. Oh, good. Would you like to hear more? Uh, no thank you, Siri. Into Nonto. We've done everything but score the goal so far. I'll try and get this to Piru again if I can. That is overhit, to say the least. I definitely didn't put that much power on it. Wagner's been able to nod that into Gray, and I'm going to drill this through the gap. Nonto from range. Wilfred! Saved by Ingram. Again! How many saves can one goalkeeper make in a single game of football, I hear you ask? Well... This many and probably more by the end. We're only half an hour in here still. Peru. Ugh, I need the support. Roden. Are you going on the run, Cody? I'll dink it to ensure it gets to you. Cody Drama delivers that hit. Hand, free kick. Come on, men. Please. I want to win the league. Oh, Archie Gray might have been the one to give us the result that would have seen us doing it as well. But over the bar goes the ball. Still no news of any other result, really. I don't recall actually seeing anything in the top right of my screen. So I have no idea what's happening at the top or bottom 
or middle of the table. Both relegation and playoff places up for grabs on top of this title fight. And this is really is a title fight at the moment as well because we're fighting to get an equaliser here against Hull City and I am not getting one. Not yet. We might not need one, but we more than likely will with the way that Leicester score goals and the way that Sheffield Wednesday concede them. Joe Roden's done brilliantly there and that has never been a foul in the history of the sport, ref. Troyore off for them. They make a change. It's Fabio Carvalho, the Liverpool loanee, that's come on in his place. Just nod that down with Somerville. Nonto across to Peru. And we love a Crescencio Somerville counter-attack. And we'll get one. And Crescencio buries. As he always does. 1-1. One, one. That's the goal, if it stays as is, that takes us up as champions. Holding the ball up well. Carvalho and Padu won it back but then stumbled and here's Connolly and Connolly's done me Joe Roden that's why we bought you permanently lad does the business at the back bossed the championship and hopefully we'll do the same to the Premier League as well around the corner there to Joe Gellar he's had a breakout season in the first team here for Leeds United full first team spot that he I don't believe has in real life. And we've really noticed his improvement throughout the course of the year. Tuck this back. Piru! Swing and a miss. We want to win on the final day if we can. But ultimately all we want is the title. Drama. Big switch. Looking for Somerville. Finding him well. Here comes Kai Wagner. Our main signing this season. Has great crossing. As... Oh! That's a title winning goal! Get in there, Joel Peru! Champions, Leeds United! We need to see that again. We bought Kai Wagner because of his crossing. Joel Peru started because of his finishing. That's a fucking goal, lads. Bosh! <laughs> Insert Zidane gif. Oh, Greaves has made the mistake. Hull are falling apart. They've done tremendously well so far today. But their destiny is sealed, as is ours. Gellar on the score sheet as well. He, Peru and Somerville have probably been the best three players for us this season offensively. Bamford started the season very well, but everyone else took over from him in the latter stages. And we are marching on together to the Premier League and doing so as league winners. Sorry, Leicester. You're going to get at least 103 points, probably 106, and not win the league. It's Carvalho. They might add a little bit of spice at the end here, Hull. But they'd need to score three for us to stand a chance of not winning the league. Because a point would have been enough. But... This Leeds side don't settle for just enough. This Leeds side want everything and everything we shall have. Apart from a golden boot winner, I guess. Leeds United, your championship champions for 24-25. No, 23-24. Let's not get carried away. Premier League champions 24-25. Lol, not a chance, but... I don't think we'll struggle in a relegation fight. At least I hope we won't struggle in a relegation fight. Our side is good enough to stay up as it is. I'm not planning on widespread financial chaos in the summer window by splashing out on a 150 million quid's worth of new players. These guys have earned the right to have a go at the Premier League themselves. They stuck with us when the club went down. Those that went out on loan... They don't get to taste this glory. They don't get to come back to the Premier League. They're off in the summer, as you guys rightly want them to be. Pascal Strauch, captain for the season, lifts the championship trophy aloft. We will go up as league winners. I am sorry, Leicester. It's, you've pushed us 
all the way. And it's been a remarkable title fight. It really genuinely has. The closest, I think, of all time, given the nature of the two seasons. Proper Wrexham and Notts County stuff here in the championship. With more on the line as well. But we both will go to the champions, to the Premier League, sorry. Oh my God, Sheffield Wednesday won! Leicester! Even if I'd lost, they bottled it anyway. When Hull took a 1-0 lead, Leicester were loving life. Then they went and conceded three against Sheffield Wednesday. Coventry beat West... Sorry, Coventry beat Watford. So Coventry come up into fifth. Stoke lost, no, drew with Southampton. So they dropped to sixth. And what was potentially a, pre a playoff precursor rehearsal actually isn't now the case. Stoke will face Middlesbrough and Southampton will have Coventry now in the playoffs. We go up as champions breaking Rex, uh, breaking Reading's 106 point record but Leicester pushed us all the way to the final day and we needed to be that good to win the league. We needed 100 points to go up automatically because Middlesbrough were Absurd. Southampton were really, really, really strong as well. At the bottom end of the table then were Ipswich able to save themselves. They were not. Ipswich Town drew on the final day with Huddersfield Town. And it's Ipswich that go back down. Wednesday pull it off against Le second place Leicester City. Fair play, Sheffield Wednesday. If you can do that on the final day, you deserve to stay up. And not only was it by one goal... On goal difference it literally was by one goal they both won eight drew 15 and lost 23 they both conceded 71 but Wednesday scored that one extra goal and that one extra goal was the one goal margin they beat Leicester by to keep themselves in the league that could not be closer could it literally could not be closer what a season well let's Advance towards the end so we know who's going to be joining us in the Premier League from the playoffs. And then we'll have a full season roundup at the end of the season to show you exactly how things went down in every other competition that we played in this year. And we can have a think about that summer transfer window if there's a lot we want to do or more than likely whether there's a minimal amount we want to do just to bulk out the squad a little bit. Let's head forward a month. Oh, Player of the Season award for the Championship. Kaká to present it. Who's going to win it, though? Peru? Peru, maybe? No, Joe Gellhart. Joe Gellhart wins player of the season in the championship. Well done, lad. That's unexpected. Genuinely unexpected. I'm there in my Gareth Southgate attire with my waistcoat. Well done, Joe. Congratulations, mate. Well, that's a curveball nobody thought was coming. We we do get we do get a bus bus parade champions. It's never been that sunny in Leeds ever. <laughs> I mean, I'm probably going to get copyright struck for the music, but we don't really care that much actually. We've had a. A, bu a bus parade like this, a trophy parade with Real Sociedad, we're winning La Liga and the Europa League. And he's wearing a free agent kit. The DJ's got a free agent kit on. Of course he does. Oh, is there, <laughs> is there anything more EA than that? We won the, the Europa League and La Liga at Real Sociedad in the, uh, in the player career on the second channel and had a bus parade. Weirdly, we didn't have a bus parade at Salzburg for our league title and cup double or in Poland when we won the league in Poland in the player career either but we get one here in Leeds youth scout report available we've had a couple of in fact I've probably signed more youth players in this save than I have in the last four or five combined Ellis Stokes might be worth a look we'll give him a little bit of a closer inspection whilst we continue to advance a little bit further so we know who's going to join us from the playoffs Louis Sinistera just as was the case in real life has had the clause activated in his contract so that's one that is taken out of our hands I anticipated that happening to be fair Louis Sinistera will join Bournemouth permanently in the summer I like that I was probably if it wasn't triggered in game going to manually with the live editor actually edit that transfer and send him to Bournemouth 
rather than uh, selling him to anyone else. So that's been taken out of my hands. We are going to lose Liam Cooper and Stuart Dallas on a free, unfortunately, at the end of the season. We just, we've outgrown them. Um, they're aging out of uh, their championship level careers, let alone their Premier League level careers, unfortunately for them. So we should be now, I believe, able to do a full season roundup. So uh, ourselves and Leicester go up. You've kind of seen the league table already. But we want to know who went up via the playoffs. In the FA Cup, Chelsea beat Arsenal by two goals to nil. In the Carabao Cup, Man City beat Liverpool on penalties in the playoffs. It's Middlesbrough, Southampton, Coventry or Stoke. Middlesbrough. Michael Carrick is back in the Premier League for the first time as a manager. Middlesbrough 2, Coventry 1. The side that finished third in the table do get promoted. And I know I've said it before, I do like that. When the side that finishes top of the playoffs also gets promoted, then the three best sides in the league went up. And I rate that. I like that. Middlesbrough beat Stoke 2-0. Sorry, 2-1 in the first leg and 1-0 in the second. Coventry massive second leg comeback against Southampton. They lost 2-1 at home to Southampton and then went down to St Mary's and smashed them, but couldn't make it any further up. Unfortunately for them, Wembley has stepped too far. City won the away for Super Cup. Champions League was won by Atletico Madrid over Bayern. The Europa League pardon me, was won by West Ham over Roma, so they've gone Europa Conference League, Europa League, West Ham Champions League winners next year? Maybe. And Marseille win the Europa Conference League by two goals to one over Lille in an all French tie. With regards, uh, player state, player states, player stats. Mavadidi was the league's top goal scorer with 22 in the end. John Swift got 20 for West Brom from midfield. Fastnacht with 20 at Norwich as well, both of which we should probably scout and have a look at. I like the idea. This came from someone in, uh, in live chat. Spicy lettuce, I think. Uh, I like the idea of signing players that have been really strong in the championship but not come up. Greenwood is our player. He was on loan from us at Middlesbrough and scored 20 goals from them from out wide. Latalath has obviously now come up with Middlesbrough as well. Do we look at right? I don't really need a backup striker. I've got Peru. I've got uh, Ruter. We're going to be letting Bamford go probably in the summer. Do I look for Wright? Do I look at Hadji Wright? Maybe. I don't know. Mavadidi's coming up with us. Do I look at Swift in the midfield? Do we look at Fasnacht? We can scout them at the very least, can't we? Josh Madger got 18 in 39 as well. Assist-wise, Mavadidi got 13 as well. So for Gellart to get player of the season with 16 goals compared to Mavadidi's 22 and, and six assists... Compared to Mavadidi's 13, I kind of think he's done He's done one there. Gelhart maybe was our player of the season, but to get the league's player of the season is unfair on Mavadidi, I think. With regards to clean sheets, Melier got 23 in 46 compared to Dieng's 19. It's not like we kept loads of clean sheets compared to everybody else. Dieng with 19 for Middlesbrough. Leicester not even got a goalkeeper on that list, do they? Hermanson kept 5 in 42. Wow. We saw that they scored a lot of goals. We also saw that they conceded a lot of goals. And rather evidently, that was the case. Are there any jobs available? Not that we take them. Southampton jobs available. Leicester. Of course the Leicester job available. They just got promoted in second. Absolutely that job's available. Celtic. Apparently have only played 5 games in the Scottish Premier League so far this season. Rangers is available as well. Yeah. Absolute bollocks. That system needs an entire overhaul, doesn't it? Maybe for 25, we'll wait and see. Maybe for 26 or 27, we'll wait and see. I'm just going to splice this in because I forgot to show you the other leagues from around the world uh, on the uh, season finale. So uh, this will probably be thrown in randomly before I end the video. The other leagues around Europe that we're interested in, although apparently not that much because I forgot. Manchester United won the Premier League. After 37 games, Liverpool were on 79 points. Manchester United had played 36 and were on 73. Liverpool lost on the final day. Man United won their final two games and win the league on goal difference. Fair play. Manchester City a single point behind. Arsenal fourth. Villa and Newcastle 
the remainder of the European spot. Spurs and Chelsea outside. Relegated a long time ago. Burnley, Luton and Sheffield United. I don't think there's any players in there that I'd be like, oh, must sign those. Really? I can't think of anyone off the top of my head. Maybe Sander Berger, maybe Ryan Giles, but I don't know. I don't know. League One, coming up to the championship of Bolton and Portsmouth. In the playoffs of Derby, Charlton, Wickham and Barnsley. Please tell me Cambridge avoided relegation. Yeah. 16th in the league. Looking forward to the Cambridge United save, which will follow this one. Fleetwood, Lincoln, Carlisle and Port Vale relegated. Quite realistic, that. Although Lincoln probably a mid-table side and Cheltenham probably the relegation side. But fair enough. In League Two, coming up, Wrexham, Notts County both get back-to-back -back promotions. Gillingham also back up to League One. Stockport, Walsall, Swindon and Harrogate in the playoffs. Relegated were the National League on the game would be Newport and Morecambe. In France, in League 1, PSG by 14 points. In the Bundesliga, Bayern Munich by 9. How unrealistic for Bayern Munich to win the Bundesliga. It should be Leverkusen. Such is the remarkable job that Xabi Alonso is doing right now. It, oh, in the Indian Super League is Mumbai. In Serie A, it's Lazio by a point from Inter. Napoli down in third and Roma fourth. Juventus only sixth. AC Milan eighth. Eighth for AC Milan. That is horrendous. Portugal, Porto. Uh, Scotland, Rangers on goal difference ahead of Celtic. And Aberdeen only three points behind. That's a very, very close title fight actually. And both Celtic and Rangers not getting anywhere near as many points as they normally do. In La Liga, Real from Barca, from Atleti. Real Sociedad in fourth. My former, my player team. Congratulations to them. Right. That's all. For oh, hang on. Did they go unbeaten? I think Real Madrid went unbeaten. I see Real Madrid went unbeaten. 28 wins, 10 draws, no defeats, I think that said. They did indeed. Fair play. Right. Now I've done that bit, I can cut back to past me and continue on with the episode. So then, how did our team do? With regards to top goal scorer, it was Peru with 25. And he got 17 assists as well. 13 assists in the championship, equal with Mavadidi. Gelhart was 22 and, uh, and 9 assists. His average rating, however, overall was higher than Peru, which is maybe why... He got the nod for player of the season. Maybe his average rating was higher than Mavadidi's as well. Who knows? Uh, Greenwood. Pardon me. Uh, 20 goals for him out on loan. Ruter 17 and 11. Somerville 15 and 11. Bamford 15 and 12. I feel harsh letting Bamford go. Let me know in the comment section. Do we let Bamford go or do we just keep him at the club as a backup and don't sign someone like Hadji Wright? or Fastnacht. Keep Bamford or Nah? That's one main thing that I'll, I'll ask you guys in in comment section to uh, to tell me about. Nonto, 11 assists for him and 7 goals. Dan James, 5 and 3. Perveda did a bit for Sheffield Wednesday, but I don't know whether I'll use Perveda next year. I'll send him out on loan again. Archie Gray with 8 assists is actually quite good for him midfield, so I'm quite happy with that. Definitely the right decision to move him into a central area, wasn't it? Ampadu is 6th. Six. 6 Gruev got 5 to be fair to him. Overall development, though, Darlow's leaving us. He goes to Rangers when the transfer window opens. Clareson's grown two out on loan at Ipswich. Melier's up four and obviously will be our starting goalkeeper in the Premier League. And Clareson will be our backup. McDonald will look to send out on loan. Drew will look to send out on loan. In fact, let me add them to the loan list now so I don't forget. Wagner's been great coming in uh, in January. Absolutely sold with him. Fantastic signing. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh... Not grown, though, this year. Hopefully, dynamic potential kicks in next year. Furpo, meh. I'd be happy to let Furpo go and look for a younger left-back, but maybe we just keep Furpo in the system for a backup. Cooper's obviously leaving us. Urente will sell. Roden will start. Verba and Koch will sell. Strout will start. Cresswell will be back up. Montero will send out on loan again at 65 rated. I will... Probably look to loan in another centre-back or maybe look at the free agents or sign someone that's also young and up and coming. But 
Montero's growing quite well, and hopefully Montero can go all the way. We'll wait and see. Cresswell's supposedly got good potential, so we'll keep him in the picture. Uh, Ailing will look to move on, so I will probably look for I'll probably look for a backup fullback regardless, because I'll have drama, I'll have Furpo, and I'll have Wagner. So I, if we let Furpo go, I'm definitely going to need at least one fullback, aren't I? Kamara, I didn't use. I know it was a new signing this year, but I'm. I'm going to sell him. I don't use him. I don't need him. Ampadu, rock solid. Can't recommend enough that you guys pick him up in your own saves. He's superb. Rocker will sell. Gruev will stay for now. Archie Gray obviously continues on in the midfield. He's grown very well this season. Gabby will probably go out on loan again next year. And we might look to loan a centre mid. I'm not sure yet. Somerville obviously starts. Sam Greenwood. He's only 22. I don't know whether to loan him out again or keep him as a backup winger. I, I think he's probably not good enough yet. So he might need a loan. And maybe we look to loan in whilst we loan out rather than actually buy players for our first year back in the Premier League. And that way we can actually use some of these younger, growing Leeds players later in the save. Nonto obviously is going to continue on as my uh, starting right-sided player. Dallas is leaving us. Shackleton is just a great squad option. Can play pretty much anywhere other than in goal or up top. Lewis Bate is another player we could use as a centre mid backup. Although probably would be better served with another loan spell like Darko Giabi. Gellhart's obviously superb. Aronson will sell. Donnelly will be my backup cam, I think. Travella and acrobatic uh, play styles. will look to improve his passing and his dribbling in this upcoming uh, season when he gets back from that loan. I might send him out on loan again. I'll take your feedback on that one, actually. But probably could be utilised in the squad. Maybe. Nathan Fletcher, obviously up six here. We will uh, look to loan him out next season as well. Coming up from the Youth Academy. Harrison will sell. Dan James has been decent. So good squad player to have. Perveda, I'm unsure about. He's got pace. Well, he's got acceleration, at least. Of that, there's no doubt. But technically... Oh, so I don't think we'll do anything other than sell Pervader, I would imagine. Sonny Perkins has got some pace and technically is dead as well, but another loan spell might do him well. I know he, I know Sonny Perkins can grow to like 78 rated, so we'll keep loaning him out. Rute is up six this year with a position change, of course. He's unhappy at the moment because he's not played that much football or as much football as he might like, but he's superb and will be my backup striker and cam. Bamford is Bamford. He has grown this year and will potentially grow next year as well, maybe. Peru up 4 to 78. You guys wanted him in the starting lineup. We put him in the starting lineup. Great decision. He's a banger. Mateo Joseph is actually up 5. I don't know what his default potential is, but he's got pace and can finish. So we might loan him out again. And then Nicholas Goddard is our uh, Mark Viduka regen that we're going to look to continue to grow with another loan spell next year after he gets back from wherever the hell it was. It was this year. Wuhan Three Towns. The obvious loan spell. So there's a lot to be done. We're going to have a, a really, really good budget because of the players we're going to be selling. So what do I do? Ultimately, what do I do? I'll record episode one of season two. Uh before I then pause and get all of your feedback from this episode and episode one of season two, before then acting on it in the uh, in the remainder of the summer transfer window. But that is all for this part of the uh, of the season finale. It's been a long video. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Do leave the video a like if you could be so kind. I'd appreciate it. With regards to the Patreon players, we'll have a proper roundup at the end of the. Uh, summer transfer window because obviously we want to factor in any moves that you guys have made we have had one more free agent move that's james blacker has gone to benfica as a free agent other than that nothing else has changed at present from the end of the january transfer window but evidently as we move forward into the new season then there are new opportunities for all of you to either sign for your first club or move from a second club or to a second club, or maybe even a loan spell like uh, Andy did from Bolton to uh, to Tyrol. We'll wait and see. If you want to see your stats in closer detail, then do come and join me on stream. More than happy to show you guys your individual stats 
in closer detail, but that is all for this first season at Leeds. I think that went quite well, don't you? Do join me on Monday for season two. Thank you very much for your support. Do drop the video a like. It really helps the content. Subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more. Join me tomorrow on stream for some Formula One over the weekend. And then we'll be back with more FC Career Mode on Monday. I'll see you then.